Welcome and good afternoon. My name is Kamish Orr, and I run a league called Baseball Maelstrom. But today, uh, we're going to talk about play-by-play -play data from RetroSheet and how you can um, download that data and use it to uh, find the answers to different questions you may have about uh, play distribution in Major League Baseball. Uh, I've done a video recently about uh, runner on first, uh, what happens, uh, who is fielding the ground outs, um, what those ground out results are, whether it's a double play, a force out, or a, getting the batter out at first, and kind of what that distribution is based on which fielder is fielding those, uh, those ground balls and so forth. I plan to do more videos in the future about um, different runner situations uh, and what those results are to see if it matches with conventional wisdom or whether there are any surprises there. I also did a video about bunt data in uh, Major League Baseball in this 2022 season. Um, so if you're interested in either of those, you can follow those um, by following this channel. Uh, in any event, I had a question uh, from somebody wondering how I got the data that I was using. And in the case of the runner data, I downloaded that from RetroSheet. Retro uh, you can download the play-by-play -play data. So um, it's not easy, necessarily easy to do. It's not difficult, but there are several steps involved. So I thought I'd take some time and do a video to walk you through the process so that you too, if you're interested, could download play-by-play -play data from RetroSheet um, and have access to a pretty powerful tool um, to look at um, different events and plays uh, from this past season or actually any season that RetroSheet has. So let's do that now. All right, so the first step is to head over to RetroSheet, <laughs> RetroSheet.org um, if you haven't been over here, it's a great site that has lots of information. Um, what we are interested in, though, is the data download section. So if you hover, hover over data downloads and click play-by-play -play files, you will get to the play-by-play -play data files. And as you can see, if you look down just a little bit, um, there's some important uh, or helpful, I should say, links here, which we'll talk about here in a second. But if you head down about halfway, you can get regular season event files from every year from 1914 to the season that just ended 2022. Now the seasons, uh, the 2022 season just came out a few weeks ago. So it takes them a little bit of time to compile that after a season ends uh, before they're available. Um, but that came out, I believe, I don't know, maybe a month ago, um, maybe a month or so ago. You can also get the event files by decade, where you can get a whole decade's worth of files uh, if you wanted to. You can also get box score event files um, and box score event files by decade and so forth. But what we're interested in is these event files up here. And I'm going to use the 2022 season as an example, um, just uh, for our purposes. But uh, keep in mind, you can do this with any season. Um, uh, also keep in mind that past seasons don't always have the most complete data um, so some of the, some of the data may be incomplete for some of the older seasons. Um, I can't remember what year, but, um, you start getting more and more complete as you get more modern, I guess. So after a certain year, the data is pretty complete, but, uh, once you get back, uh, back a ways, um, it's, it's not as complete as, as you would hope. Uh, but any, anyway, um, what you do is you just come up here and click on whatever, season you are interested in. I'm going to use the 2022 season, as I said. And what it will do is it will download a zip file, 2022 EVE, meaning event, dot zip. Um, so uh, we want to uh, go to that zip file and um, right click on it use whatever unzipping software you are familiar with and um, you want to extract that i'm just going to extract it here on the desktop for now um, it'll take a few seconds to extract into a folder also called 2022 or whatever season eve and inside of that you will have access to a bunch of well <laughs> some might say gibberish um, but basically what it is, is it's a, a listing of all the event files for each team. You can also get roster files here. Uh, so you can find the roster files for each team down here. Um, that is not going to be what we're going to look at. We're not going to look at the roster files in this video. We're going to look at the event files. 
And so um, as it, let's look at the top one here, 2022 ANA.EVA. What that means is it's the 2022 season, it's Anaheim, and EVA means EV is event and A means American League. You can see the next one, 2022 ARI.EVN. That's Arizona, N is National League, and so on. So there's an event file for every team. And what I would recommend is going to your C drive and just creating a folder called B-E-V-E-N-T, B event. I've already done that. And drop all of these files into that folder. So they're just all in the same space, same place. And that's what you're going to work out of. So I've already done that, as I said. So if you go over to my B event folder, you can see all of the teams um, listed here. And then um, that's where the folder that you're going to work out of. Now, heading back to Retro Sheet. Remember, I told you about these other links. Now, the files, when you download them, aren't really usable. You can't really read them um, in their current format. So what you need to do is, unless you have some knowledge with uh, programming, um, which I don't, um, I wanted to get these events into an Excel format so that I could filter in Excel. And so that's what I'm going to show you how to do. Um, in order to do that, you'll need a uh, you'll need a tool to download the tool. And you'll see software tools here. Um, the very last link here is software tools. And if you click on that, here are the Retro Sheets software tools for event files. Bevent.exe is the one we're going to use. That's the one that will create the play-by-play -play data file that we need to use. But there is a box exe uh, that will generate traditional box scores from retro sheet data files. Um, there's a bgame exe that makes a summary of game data. And then there's the unzip utility if you need one here too. Now this uh, is for PC. Uh, a Mac user, there is a different process that you need to go through to, to get these uh, downloaded and unzipped. I'm showing you the PC version. Um, I'm showing you the PC version. So after you download the event files, you're going to want to come up here and download this bevent.exe. And if you click on this, it will, again, download a zip file, bevent.zip. And um, if we go to that folder, um, you can unzip that again, extract it, whichever, using whichever program you, you use. And it will create a B event folder, which the only thing in it is this B event exe file. You're going to want to drop that into the same folder that you created for the play by play data. In my case, I just called it B event. Again, I've already done that, so it's already in this folder. But you'd want to drop it in the same folder that all of the other event and roster files are in, same folder. All right, um, now for the fun stuff. Before I get to the fun stuff, I want to mention the other links here. Um, there are some other good links here. There's detailed detailed description of the event file contents. If we take a look at that, um, this is kind of some detail about the event file and what you will find within it. Um, Right now, it's not going to make a lot of sense to you, probably, if you look through it. But the important thing is that um, it, I'll show you once we get once we look at the um, at the file in Excel. But this will help you kind of um, decipher what the codes and stuff mean in certain of the fields that you'll see, um, because there's the pitch data is in there um, and all sorts of other stuff. So this this link will give you access to kind of decipher some of the meaning of what you'll see in some of the fields um, on that file. Um, so you can come there to take a look at that. Um, that's the event files. That's detailed description, um, how to use our event files. Again, some more detail about the event files, what's included, um, and some information on those. Sorry, I know it's hard to read. I'm scrolling through it very quickly. Here is a 
the B event fields. Here's a description of what the B event fields are. So it kind of goes field by field and kind of tells you what, what you're looking at. Um, there's an event type field where you'll see a code, a num numerical code that tells you what type ev of event is in that row, for example. And then down here, this is the important thing that we'll need here in a minute. These are all the fields that you can download or extract from the event data. There's 97 of them. Zero, which is the game ID number, all the way to 96. So you can choose not to extract all of them. I, I extracted all of them because I wasn't sure which I wanted to use and which ones I didn't. Um, so I'm extracting all of them. But um, you could go in here and only extract a couple of them if you weren't interested in the others. Uh, but that's where you find that. Um, hit location diagram is probably the other one that's that's going to be uh, interesting. Every uh, every uh, batted ball will list a, a location where the ball was hit, and those locations match up to this uh, this diagram. So if you see four MD. That means it was hit right here, just past second base uh, on the second base side, kind of middle of the field here. If you have, um, you know, well, you can you can read this, but but basically this will tell you where a ball was hit, which if you're interested you in exactly where a ball was hit, you can look it up here each play is is designated even whether it was caught or whether it was a base hit everything is coded based on where it was hit now you can see that again some of the older seasons aren't going to have this this data because they just didn't keep track of that back then but the modern seasons are for the most part are going to have this data for every ball put into play um so if if this is interesting to you that's the hit location diagram all right so now uh, now that I've explained that a little bit, now we go to the fun part. Uh, the fun part is we need to um, use a DOS command, basically, to uh, extract the data into an Excel format. So on a Windows PC, you can type CMD in the search, um, and you want to pull up this command prompt. You want to pull up the command prompt. And then what you want to do is you want to change the directory so that you're in that B event folder that we were talking about earlier. And the way you do that is you type CD backspace, e, uh, excuse me, B E V E N T, the name of the folder that we created earlier. If you titled your folder something else, you, you would put in whatever the name of the folder was. You hit enter. And now you are working on that folder itself. Um, there is a, <laughs> a command string you need to put in here in order to get it to extract everything correctly. And I'm going to put that in the description because it's a lot to type. But here it is in a Word document. <laughs> um, basically, you're going to type B event, which is the name of the file that you're, or the, yeah, the file that you're running, that exe file, a space, dash y that means the year space 2022 or whatever season you're you're doing another space dash f and this is where we're going to tell it which fields we want space 0 to 96 remember i said there were 97 fields numbered 0 to 96 0 to 96 means i want all the fields and then you're going to put a space and you're going to list out all of those event files that we want to use. So in my case, I wanted all of the event files from the entire season. So I needed to list all 30 teams, one after the other, with a space in between, all in order, in order to do that. If you only wanted to look at events from a certain team, you didn't care about the others, you could just put one team in here and it'll just pull the events from that one team. But I wanted everything, so I just put all of them in here. And then at the end, you put a space, and you put the a greater than sign, I'll call it. Um, another space, 2022 events dot CSV, or whatever title you want to call it. 
Um, CSV is a format that Excel can read. So that's what you want, why you want the .csv on the end of it. The 2022 events, you can name that whatever you want. Okay. So you want to copy that. I use control C to copy. You want to come back to your command prompt and hit control V. So once you've done that and hit enter, you'll see processing file as it processes each of the roster files. If you go back to your B event folder, you now see a CSV file here, this brand new CSV file. And that's what you want to open. If you open it up, it takes, it'll take a bit to open because it's a large file. Okay, there's like 180,000 plays. So it's a very large file. And you'll get something that looks like this. And I'll explain a little bit um, what this stuff is. Now, what I wanted, I wanted headings so that I knew what each of these fields was. And you'll notice there isn't anything in the top as a heading. Uh, but if you scroll all the way down, you can see what I'm talking about. There are 187,365 events from the 2022 season. Okay, this is everything. Um, right now, they're, they're in order based on the team. So Anaheim was first. But I wanted a heading here. Um, I wanted a heading here so that I knew what each of these fields was. So if you go over to the, to the first row, you want to insert a blank uh, row in there to, to have our headings. And then what I did is I just went back to the uh, retro sheet and um, went to the got to find the right one. I went to the, there we go. Remember those listing of the, the 96, the 96 uh, fields and what they meant. You just come in here and you can uh, copy those. So what I did was I came to the very bottom, right clicked and you don't want to paste and keep the source formatting. You want to match destination formatting. Then what you want to do is highlight those, uh, all those, those numbers down here. Right click, copy, go all the way back to the top, click into that first A1 cell, right click, and there's a transpose paste option. Click the transpose paste, and now you have headings for each of the columns. You'll also have to go back down here and delete these uh, 96, or excuse me, 97 um, fields. You just delete those. I've tried to just cut instead of copy and then transpose. It doesn't want me to transpose. So you may have to just do what I just did. All right, so what, you're, what you have now is the powerful tool almost in its finished format. The last thing you wanna do um, is you want to come over here to data and you want to click this filter button. Now you can, now you can filter by different things. Now let's just take a look at the fields here. The first field is a game ID. So every game has a game ID. Um, Anaheim 2022, that's the home team. And then the date 0407. So that's April 7th which was probably the first uh, opening day for Anaheim at least. Second field is the visiting team. So they would play Houston. Uh, then we have inning. Batting team is either the visiting team is zero, the home team is one, I believe. How many outs there were at the time? How many balls, how many strikes? Pitch sequence. Um, so there isn't a separate line for every pitch, but there is a separate line for every event, meaning either the ball was put into play or a stolen base occurred, that kind of thing. Here's the pitch sequence in uh, leading up to that particular play. Okay, and again, you can go to RetroSheet and get the um, description of what all of this, all of these uh, mean, because um, each one is different. I'm guessing F is foul, C is, or B is ball, um, C is probably strike. 
you have the visiting score, the home score, so you can get the what what was the score at the time. You get the batter. Um, every player has a player ID. So this is um, this is the player ID for the for the batter, whether the batter is batting right or left handed. Resulting batter in most cases is going to be the same as the batter. The only time that's different is if there was a uh, batting change in the middle of the play or the middle of the bat. Uh, the pitcher, again, each player has a pl player ID code, whether the pitcher was right or left-handed. So um, this is Altuve probably against Otani, looks like, for the first uh, for the first batter of the Anaheim game. Again, uh, RES pitcher is if there was a pitching change in the middle of that um, at bat or event. Uh, and then you have... Uh, very, very interesting. You have all of the fielding. Um, who are the fielders during that event? So catcher first, second, third, short, left, center, right. All of the fielders for that event. Then you have the base runners. Who was the runner on first? Runner on second? Runner on third? Okay. So the first two here are uh, nobody was on base. You can see. For the first two hitters and then the second hitter got on base he was on first okay and then the event text so this is where you can um use the retro sheet uh retro sheet to determine what this what these codes mean a lot of it you can kind of decipher intuitively so k strikeout s that's a single to left i believe single s or s7 is single to left and then the slash followed by where the location of the ball was hit, I believe. L7S. This was a 6-4, ground out, short to second, force out. So FO is force out. Um, again, um, you can find the ex explanation of a lot of this stuff on the retro sheet site. Um, lead off flag, where they lean off the inning. Okay. Pinch hit flag. Was it a pinch hitter? Uh, defensive position. Lineup position. So the defensive position is the defensive position of the batter. Lineup position is the lineup position of the batter. Event type. That goes back to the retro sheet. Uh, if we scroll up, here are the event types. 0 through 24. So if you're only looking for um, all the wild pitches, the event type would be a 9. If you're looking for all of the walks, the event type would be a 14. If you're looking for all the home runs, the event type is 23. Um, singles is 20, and so on. Um, generic out is a 2. So those are going to be all the outs. Uh, but you can see the kind of the, the breakdown of what the event types mean. Um, let's see, hopefully, I, I don't know that I'll know what all of these mean, but, um, batter event flag, true, uh, that's probably if the event dealt with the batter and not the base runner at bat, whether the, uh, whether that was an at bat or whether it didn't count as an at bat. So if it's a walk, this would be a false, I believe, um, hit value, um, I believe those are zero is no hit. One is a single, two is a double, three is a triple, four is a home run, I think think was it a sacrifice hit was it a sacrifice fly how many outs were on the play so two if it's a double play one if it's just a single out zero if it wasn't an out there's a double play flag so you can only find the uh, events that were double plays there's a triple play flag rbi if there was an rbi on the play uh, wild pitch pass ball Fielded by. So fielded by will tell you the first fielder to touch the ball. Why was this a zero? Because I believe that was a strikeout. So again, the single, this was a single. So it's not who made the out or who had the put out or assist. It's who fielded the ball. So this single was hit to left and was fielded by the left fielder. Uh, batted ball type. Uh, G is ground out. L is line out or excuse me, G is ground ball, L is line, line drive, F is fly ball, I believe. And again, this one didn't have one because it was a strikeout. 
whether it was a bunt, whether it was foul ball, hit location tells you where in the field that it was hit using that uh, chart that I talked about earlier. How many errors were on the play? Uh, who made the first error? And what type of error was it? Who made the second error? What type of error? Who made the third error? What type of error? Uh, batter destination. So where did the batter end up? First, The first guy, remember, struck out. Altuve struck out, so he didn't end up anywhere. Next batter ended up on first. Uh, runner on first destination. So where did that runner on first end up after the play? Runner on second destination. Where did the runner on second base end up? Runner on third. Where did the runner on third end up? Uh, what was the play on the batter? So if they made a play um, to put the batter out, what was it? Again, the strikeout. Two means uh, put out, the catcher put out, because it was a strikeout. Uh, play on the runner on first. Play on the runner on second. Play on the runner on third. So what what play was made to different uh, to put out different runners? Uh, was there a stolen base? Was there a caught stealing? Um, pickoff. These are PO is pickoff. And then we get responsible pitcher. So who is responsible for the runners on first, second, and third? Uh, new game. So a T means the start of a new game. A T here would be the end of a game. The last, because remember, these all run together. Uh, was there a pinch runner on first, second, or third? Was a runner removed for a pinch runner? Who was the runner that was removed for the pinch runner? Was the batter removed for a pinch hitter? And then the position of the batter who was removed for pitch hitter. Um, or excuse me, the posi uh, position of the batter who was removed. And then we have the fielder for the putouts. Who had the first putout? Who had the second? Who had the third? Who had the first assist, second assist, third assist, fourth assist, fifth assist. And then finally, event number. So every event is just numbered in sequential order. All right, so now that you know what all of those do, um, you can very easily find the plays that you're looking for. So like for me, I was looking for ground outs. So a lot of these, a lot of these fields I just hid. But um, I was looking for ground outs with a runner on first. So the first thing I did was I came up to first runner and clicked the little arrow to filter. And I wanted to get rid of blanks because I wanted a runner on first. And if it's blank, there isn't a runner on first. If you click OK, now it is filtered. And not only that, if you look at the very lower left, you can see that almost 60,000 of the 187,000 plays, there was a runner on first base. Now, for me, I only wanted a runner on first. So then what I did is I deselected everything except the blanks so that I wouldn't have anybody on second. And I did the same thing on third, so I wouldn't have anybody on third base. So now I have 37,280 plays where there was a runner on first, and that was the only base runner, right? And then in my case, I wanted only ground outs. So I came over here to 47, batted ball type, and I selected G. I only wanted the Gs for ground outs. Okay, so there were 10,267 ground outs with a runner on first. Anyway, as you can see, you can uh, it's a pretty powerful tool. It has a lot of data in it, and you can use it to track down all sorts of stuff. Um, if you want to remove the, um, you can see a little dot next to a field that has a filter on it. So you can clear all those filters if you want. If you click the clear up there, it'll clear all of the filters. And you can just look for the specific play you're looking for and see what the results were. Um, if you enjoy this video, I know I not ever this video won't be for everyone because not everyone wants to delve in here like I do. But if you enjoy the video, please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, click the like button to let me know. Um, if you found this helpful or interesting, I know that when I was trying to trying to go out here and do this, 
Um, there wasn't a tutorial video, at least not one I could find on YouTube. And so I kind of had to piece things together with the, um, with the description on the retro sheet site, but even that wasn't very, wasn't the clearest on what I needed to type in to find what I was looking for to download everything. Um, so I thought it'd be helpful to, to kind of do a step-by-step -step here. I know this is a longer video, but hopefully you've gotten something out of it. Um, follow my channel if you want to see the results of some of my um, uh, data crunching. Um, I, as I said, I've done the, the bunts and I've done runner on first, uh, the ground out situations with runner on first, and I plan to do uh, the following uh, runner uh, distribution and ground out distribution with different runner situations in the future. I think that's all for now. The video has gone on quite long enough. Uh, thank you so much for watching and until next time, have a great evening.